1 Corinthians chapter 4. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mystery of God. Now we see ministers, people doing things, stewards. Stewards are servants that are in charge of something. And they're usually in charge of other servants. They're given a duty higher and a more responsibility. Moreover, it is required in a steward's that a man be found faithful. Uh-oh. So in the church, if you're going to have a man who's, who is a steward, he's got to be faithful. I'm thinking of one church. I've never been there, but I, I know the thing in the church is the offices were given to people because of money and class. That's not faithfulness. It's the belief in the service and the work <clears throat> to God and the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that guy faithful? But with me, Paul, it's a small thing that I should be judge of you. I mean, what are you guys judging me for? This church who is carnal, because we're going to get into judging in a minute. And when you look at the Bible, the judgment, it, it, it ping-pongs. It's like, should I judge or shouldn't I judge? Is there a good judgment? Is there a bad judgment? But what Paul is saying, this carnal church, it's a very small thing that I should be judge of you. You guys are judging me? Really? Come on. Or a man's judgment. Any man. Yes. I judge not my own self. Well, that's interesting. And with the context we're talking about here, and later on Paul's going to say, hey, listen, we ought to judge ourselves. So is this a contradiction? No, judging ourselves is we look at the sins in our life, say, Lord, we got to put that under the blood. That's not right. Lord, I need help in this department. Lord, I'm doing pretty good in this department. But I still want to grow. But when we're getting to the judgment word right here is they're looking at criticizing. And Paul is saying, listen, I'm not criticizing myself. I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm not trying to mimic anybody. I'm not trying to be like Cephas. I'm not trying to be like Apollos. I'm just being Paul. And you guys are coming along and you're judging me because I'm not like Cephas. And so I'm not like Apollo. But... You know, if we're all ministers, we're all stewards, we all got to be faithful. That's the judgment. And the judgment comes down in this chapter, are you guys faithful? Paul is definitely faithful. For I, for I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified? But he that judges me is the Lord. And that's where you got to leave your conscience open and alive for God. When you do something wrong and God tweaks that conscience. Oh, no, I should never said that. How on earth, why did I do that? Why did I think that? Why did I dream that? Why? Did I, and that conscience comes up. That's God, the Holy Spirit, saying, you in trouble. So... One aspect is I have God judging my life and things I'm doing good and things I'm doing sinning. And he'll tell me if I'm doing good and he'll tell if I'm sinning. God judges me. That's plain and simple. And we're going to get into a judgment aspect here. It says, therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who will both, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. Okay, so do we judge or don't we judge? Well, why is Paul writing the letter to Corinthians? He opened up the letter in, in chapter 3. He says, you're a bunch of carnal. You're so carnal. You haven't grown. You've got man worship. 
You got preacher worship. Well, isn't that judging? For Paul to start the letter off that, you know, you're, you're carnal. That's judging. And the thing is, when you look at a fellow Christian, and you look at the works they've got after salvation, and you can either judge they're not right, or they're right. But I have no right to say to somebody, because you're not in the street preaching, but if they're door knocking, or they're passing out gospel tracts, or you're going to celebrate Christmas and we don't celebrate Christmas. Or Easter. Your family goes out to eat or shops on a Sunday afternoon. Our family doesn't shop and go out to eat after, after Sunday. When judgment comes for a Christian is, does it really involve uh, violating the scriptures? Now I believe helping Christians. My, my hope is my only more that when it comes to the time of call Christmas, especially Santa Claus, that Christians ought to know it is a pagan holiday and it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. And I'm not slamming a hammer down on you to, oh, Christmas. I'm trying to show you, you know what? What you're doing is against the Bible. It's against God. And you will be held accountable. Now, if you want to shop on Sundays or Saturdays, you know, there's no Sabbath law for us. Personally, in the back of my hey, listen, I shop and, and do things on Sunday myself. But I would think it'd be great if we could just shut this country Sunday down so everybody can go to church. But I've read enough history books where the uh, in India, I believe it is, the India government gave the English people Sundays off. To go serve their gods. And you can find this in history. And the English and the Indian government stopped it because he said, you know what? We gave you guys Sundays off, and 90% 90 90 of you did not show up in church like we gave you the day off for. So, are we trying to help Christians grow in our judgment, in prayer, and seeking God? You know, we remove the beam of our own eye. Are we just being critical and being rumorous and just faulty when we look at other Christians? Paul's judging definitely in chapter 3. There's no beyond a shadow of doubt. They're doing wrong. And he brings up the judgment seat of Christ. What you guys are going to do is going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. And you know what? It's going to be put to the fire. And Paul saying, listen, you guys are judging me. I don't even judge myself. God judges me. I've got a direct relation with God that God says, hey, that's wrong, Stiley. <sighs> yeah. Lord, help me. Put it under the blood. There are some Christians out there. The Lord will tell them, say, you know, that's wrong. Do -de -do -de -do -de -do. And they need help. This Corinth church, they're involved in so much sin, they need help to say, what you're doing is wrong. And they can say, judge not, least he be judged. And God says, okay, fine, Paul, leave there. And I'll just shut the door and just let them die out. Like he's doing with the, with the Laodicean church age. You go up to a Christian nice, cheerfully, prayerfully, biblically, with the Bible and say, you know, let me show you something here, what you're doing. And then give them time. It's not going to get out of their life right away. Pray over them. Keep it. Some things they may be doing, they don't know it's wrong. But you better have a lot of prayer in it. I've got two families right now I've, I've been involved with, and, and it's, it's one big major sin. One family, I took action, and I'm just praying for it. You know, they really liked the effort I put into it. They really, they knew, I tried to hide it, but they knew it was me, and they really appreciate it. They gave me a phone call and said, hey, you know, we know it was you. We thank you for the love, and I'm praying for them still. And I hope that sin will depart out of their life and their children's life. When you do it that kind of spirit, 
and you leave yourself open to God to judge you. Okay. Paul's having no problem with God telling him what's wrong in his life. We even saw a case in, in Acts. Paul was disobedient. Man, he was told by the Christians. He was told by the Holy Spirit. He was told by a prophet, don't go to Jerusalem. See, we're all sinners. Paul would have a very hard time preaching a message about obedience after that one. And there are some things I have done in my own personal life as a sinner, judging myself, it's hard to preach. Because I'll look back like, I did that. It's under the blood, but the, the guilt is still there. And I don't want to see other Christians do it, because it'll hurt. For I know nothing by myself. That's, what, what am I? Who am I to do? If you didn't have a Bible, okay, let's say there was no Bible ever. Right now in 2016, no word of God at all. What would you know would be right and wrong? By the government? Well, let's see. Uh, I asked my wife two years ago. It was illegal to have marijuana, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, is it illegal now? Most states, no. And I don't know. I, I keep forgetting to do it because this mess has got me all messed up. I'm trying to think. If you legal states of, of marijuana, can you do it outside on your porch? I don't know about that. There was a time that, you know, thieves would do it in the middle of the night where they wouldn't be caught. Today it's out in the open. Where do you learn sin? You learn from what God has given you. Even in the, the heathen in Africa, your heart condition will tell you, hey, that's not yours. Keep your hands off it. You're not supposed to do that. And with us Christians who have a Bible and can get a Bible at any price, any version we want, any writings we want, there, there's any publishing house we want, big print, red print, yellow print, whatever kind of print we want, we can get the Bible. We can see what is wrong and right. And then look at the churches today. And you want to judge. Look at, look at the churches today with tomorrow being Christmas. And how many are going to have trees, lights, and Santa Claus? There you go judging again, Stalin. Yeah, but Christmas is not Jesus. Christ was never in it. If you study your history, you would know it's Baal worship. And I'm trying to help you to be judged by God. He that judges me is the Lord. I don't want to see Christians at the judgment seat of Christ, but we just read in chapter 3, get lost because they ought to know that today and tomorrow is a pagan holiday. And it's been preached long enough. We don't want to hear it. Judge not least you be judged. That's a rightful judge. Now, if your family wants, we already read about it. If your family wants to have just salad and greens for, for your meal, fine, good, that's great. You want to have holidays, Passover? That's good. But do you know what holiday you're worshiping? Do you know the facts behind that holiday? That's what you got to get looking into. Right now we're celebrating Hanukkah. Hanukkah is one of those iffies. It's a Jewish holiday, but it's not a Bible holiday. And I just realized today that the Morara, I'm saying it wrong. It has eight candles, not seven, like the one that was in the temple. Uh -huh. I learned that today. The one that was in the temple, Solomon's temple, the one that Moses designed, had seven lights, not eight. The one that's in the middle is used to light. Yeah, used like, But it still has eight, eight lights, and the one in the middle, the one that Moses and, and Solomon made, had seven. Three branches and the one in the middle. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. Does that mean before the rapture, you know, we don't judge anything? That would be foolish. Who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness? That's the judgment seat of Christ, chapter 3. And will make manifest the counsels of the heart. Oh, there's the heart condition. You know what happens at the judgment seat of Christ with the wood, hay, or stubble? Gold, silver, precious stones. If you all watch your heart. 
I believe that some cases, if something you couldn't do because of finances or your means, but if you really, oh, Lord God, if I can just give that missionary, or if I could just help that Christian, I ain't got the means. I believe that prayer will be credited to them as a giving prayer, even though you couldn't give nothing. Because your heart really wanted to do something. And then shall every man have praise of God after the judgment seat of Christ. Everyone, even without rewards. <laughs> and these things, brethren, save people. Ha I have in figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sake, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written. You know, here we go back to... Uh, um, chapter 2 and chapter 3. Well, we like Apollos. We like Paul. We like Cephas. We like, we like our preacher. Our preacher is the greatest preacher of all preachers. Paul says, no. This is four chapters we're dealing with his man worship. You go to Washington, D.C., there's this big man sitting in a chair. You go over to North Dakota, there are four faces on, on, the, on the mountainside. The communist government will have the face of their leader. They tore down this, uh, a statue of the body of Saddam Hussein when, when they grabbed him and took him. When men get in degree, they, they put their face their bodies up for display and Paul says no our money does that our money is marked with dead men Paul says no you may learn in us not to think of man above that which is written what is it written he's dust and we were singing a hymn the other day dust and that I don't know where the ashes come from that's just only after you burn. But we're dust. We're dirt. We're mud. That's what man is. That is the, the source of man. He's mud. The source of a woman, she's a bone. That no one of you puff up the one against the other. Now stop it with these preachers. Stop it with, with these men. Churches will have big plaques about the person that gave this thing. This pew was dedicated to this family. You know, Paul says, knock it off. It's man idolatry. And it's a sin. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory? If thou hast not received it, let's talk about the different gifts and different things God's given us. God's given us some ability to preach, some ability to teach, some ability to talk to people, some ability to pray. God's given some the ability to give more than others. So what? It all comes out to the same gift. It all comes out to the same thing. The one church doing for each other and helping each other to be strong not lifting up one person or one body we are one body now the only time that, that your body should scream out with the thumb being number one is when you take a hammer and slam it okay and you know what your body does at that moment when you take that hammer and slam your thumb down all nerve endings all attention goes to because it's hurting And that's what we should do as Christians. There's a, there's a member in the body hurting. Everybody head to that attention. And let's do whatever we can do to that injured party part. When you get an infection, all your white blood cells run to that area. We've got to defend that. we got to do that as a church. When a, when a young lady, she gets a ring put on her finger at her wedding day. All the body should run to that finger and say, hallelujah, glory to there. Let's, let's keep that young lady in prayer. Her happiest moment of her time. 
when you get a wound, a diabetic wound, and it takes forever to heal, and it finally heals up, and there, there there's no more mark, it may not even, the whole body should run to that part and say, oh, hallelujah, we've been praying for you, thank God it's healed up, it is so great. So when we come to the body, we ought not be taking, you know, I don't know, the elbow, raise up the elbow, because we can throw a football, who cares? When you raise up the body for no means, it, it, it doesn't do any good. There's no purpose. It's a fault. It's a sin. When you raise somebody up, that's what you do with your sports figures. That's what you do with your actresses and actors. That's what you do with men with posters and, and cards. and No, that's a sin. That is a sin. Now ye are full. Now ye are rich. Ye have reigned as kings without us. Now that's Paul being sarcastic. Because they're saying, we're full, we're great, we're mighty, we're rich. And we reign as kings? Someone told them we're going to be reigning as king one day. And they're saying, hey, we're doing that right now. And I... Would to God ye did reign. I wish you were reign. Paul's saying you're not reign. And I would have got you reign. That we also might reign with you. Wait a minute. You guys are reigning. But us apostles. We're the 12 apostles going to be in that land sitting on thrones. How on earth are you guys reigning? And we're not even in the millennium yet. Come on guys. Who do you think you are? If you were reigning, we would be sitting amongst Israel. The Satan would be bound for a thousand years. Jesus Christ would be in Jerusalem upon David's throne. David would be attending the, the temple. The Levites would be doing their service. The 12 apostles would be in the land. And then us Christians would be there also. It'd be, we, ain't, we ain't there yet. The church is bragging. You know, those thermometers, how close we're getting to the building program. How many shoes we put in shoe boxes with Crayola crayons. And how many people we got for vacation, Bob Paul says. Stop the bragging. Not only are you worshiping man, but you're worshiping your church. And you're putting yourself in a position that you're not doing. You're lying. We're the greatest church. Lying. I guarantee there have been greater churches before the Laodicean church age. And then the Laodicean church age. So Paul uses sarcasm. I like that. Jesus uses sarcasm. For I think that God has set forth us, the apostles, last. Now, this is what Paul's going to say about the, the apostles' example. And there are people today running around calling themselves apostles. But the apostles, the three degrees to be is you have to live and see Jesus. Well, that rules that out. You have to have been baptized of John's baptism. Well, you can't do that in 2016. And you have to see the resurrected Christ. Definitely out. So there's no apostles today in 2016. When those apostles of Jesus Christ, including Paul, when they died out, that was it, the apostles. But this is what he says about the office of the apostles. As it were appointed to death, all of them, except for John, died a violent death. And you can find it in the beginning chapters of Fox's Book of Martyrs. Cruel death. For we are made a spectacle of the world. They got kings angry with them. They got the Jews angry with them. They got cities angry with them. They got the craftsmen angry with them. They got everybody angry with them. Paul's got his own church angry with them. The churches that Paul started. Well, have I become your enemy because I told you the truth? And to angels. The angels look down and they're like, what on earth are those people? The apostles amazes the angels. Come on, guys. There is Jesus praying to the Father in the garden, and you're asleep? Really? 
There is God the Son. He's on the cross. He is dying for your blood, whatever you are. He is dying for you. And there's only one apostle there at the cross? Really? He shows up in the upper room, comes walking through the door, and you still do not believe? Really? And to men. We are fools for Christ's sake. Now get back what we were learning before. The whole world thinks Christians are fools. That's what the Bible says. But ye, now here we go, here we go, here's Paul in his sarcasm, but ye are wise in Christ. Really? The same church in the next chapter, Lord Will is going to mention that they're allowing a guy to have an affair with his father's wife. You guys are wise. You guys don't even know what sin is. This is today's church. This is the lad to see in church. We're so great. We're so wonderful. And God is saying to you, you make me sick. I'm going to throw up. But we're wonderful. We're rich. You ever read what it says over there in chapter 3? With we're rich, we got goods, we're gold, we're going great. And God says, you're sick. This is the Corinth church. And I told you, I have found churches today with the Corinth Baptist name to it. I thought I never would see that. We are weak, the, the apostles. But ye are strong. Exactly the mold of the church today. In America... Orlando strong, Boston strong. Peter says you're going to just go with a with a fervent heat and a noise, <clears throat> and you're going. We'll be no Boston, we'll be no Orlando one day. It'll be even worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. There'll be no more Earth. You are honorable. We we've, we've been in churches where there've been plaques given to that church by the city they're in. How respectable this church is in. But we are despised. Even unto this present hour we both hunger. We're, we're, we need food. And thirst. Well, we're thirsty. We need drink. And are naked. Well, how's that one? You know what naked means? They ain't got no clothes. Or very little, either or. But... And are buffeted, it's whipped, punished, and have no certain dwelling place. It's not to, to end the book of Acts that Paul gets a dwelling place. Right now, he don't have no place. Like Jesus, he doesn't. Well, Jesus went out in the mountains. Sleep. Paul doesn't know where he's going to be sleeping. He doesn't know where he's going to be living. He doesn't know where. These people in Corinth have their houses. They're eating. They're drinking. They're clothed. They're wonderful. How great we are. And who do you think is going to get the most rewards out of, the, out of them or Paul? And labor. While Paul is doing the work of a missionary, he's working. He's a tent maker. Working with our own hands. Being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. So they're not having a good time. They are getting the worst of the worst in the name of Jesus Christ. Being deframed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world. How's, there's that expression, the filth of the world. Ever anybody use that? We're the filth of the world. That's the apostles. James lost his head. And are the offscoring that's despised, refused, rejected of all things unto this day. They're not invited to the socials. They're not invited to fellowships. They're not invited to church. They're not welcome. These guys wouldn't even be welcome in today's churches at all. And with some of the churches where there are today, they wouldn't even walk in the churches. 
I write not these things to shame you. But as my beloved sons, I warn you. For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet ye have not many fathers. There's not many people bringing you up. You got head knowledge, but you have no instructing. You're a bunch of teenagers who think you know it all, and you're not listening to, to your parents. You need someone to take you by the hand and grow you. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. They're Paul's children. And Acts said, I think he stayed there for three years. Now Paul's not a failure, but they... <laughs> Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Paul's telling him, say, listen, I'm your spiritual father. Will you do what I'm doing? If you're going to follow example, follow me. Now, how do you think Paul put his life? He says, if there's anybody to follow, follow me. That's a bold statement to make for a Christian. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus. Who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord who shall bring you into remembrance. Get that word down now. You know what the main problem of a Christian is? He forgets. He forgets what he was saved from. He forgot where he was going. He forgot the, the mercy and the grace that God's given him. He forgets Calvary. He even forgets Jesus Christ. Remember the Lord's Supper is to remind us what Christ has done for us and to look forward to him coming for us. We've got to keep our memory straight on what God has done and will do for us. Of my ways, which be in Christ. So Timothy is going to have to show you guys. Remember what I taught you? Remember what we did? Which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. So, what Paul's teaching in Corinth, he's teaching everywhere. It's the same doctrine. He ain't changing it because of where he is or who he's dealing with. Corinth, you're a bunch of carnal babies. You need to change. Timothy's not going to change. I'm not going to change. You want to be carnal? You don't want to get, we'll go off and find somewhere else. That would be the apostle's attitude. Now some are puffed up. Oh, look at us. Pride. As though I would not come to you. But I will come to you shortly if the Lord will. They say, We're puffed. Paul ain't going to come here. Oh, th 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 forget it. He ain't going to come here. That's his words. Don't worry. But the Lord will. I, and, and, I will come unto you shortly if the Lord will. That means the Lord willing. And we'll know. You will know when I come. Not the speech of them that are puffed up, but the power. I'm going to find out. If I show up, I'm going to find out what you guys are doing. I'm going to see what you're doing. And those that are puffed up are going to be ashamed that I'm coming. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. I want to see you do something. I don't want you to talk. I want you to walk your talk. Be ye doers of the word, he told another church. Now watch this. What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod? Oh. What do you think about that? Paul said, you want to come in here with a rod, guys? I'll come with a rod. I'll come angry. I'll become that father that chastises. He's warning them. Or in love. Well, the rod and love, according to Proverbs, are the same. 
He that loveth his son will, will, will uh, use a rod be time. Keep him out of hell to keep him straight. Keep him right. Paul's like, listen, man, I'm going to give you the dick as soon as I show up there. I'm going to do it in love. And in the spirit of meekness. I ain't coming in pride. I ain't coming in boastfulness. I'm coming in with love. And don't make me have to use that rod. But if I have to, I'll love you. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. And then we read about judgment. That would be Paul judging them as doing wrong in order to make that kind of statement. And for Christians, if they are doing wrong, pray. 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 That God will give you the right time, the right message, the right pray. You say, keep saying pray. You, you keep praying before you do something like that. Because remember, the Bible says, you better remove that, that beam that's out of your eye first. You better make sure you get your sins taken care of before you go look at other sins. And when, you, you, when you're cleaned up, you better have the heart motive, the right motive. All we know has it. And he's going to use it.